sentire media. Ciao a tutti and welcome to Venice Talks, a podcast series dedicated to Venice in Italy. I'm your host, Monica Cesarato, a Venetian food and travel blogger. Join me as I share my insider knowledge to help you explore Venice at 360 degrees. In this weekly podcast, we'll dive into the heart of the city, uncovering hidden stories and connecting with the people who make Venice unique. The artisans, the writers, the fashion designers, the bloggers, the journalists and more. Let's break free from cliché and discover the true essence of Venice, not just the monuments, but the vibrant people, the Venetians. Experience Venice the right sustainable way. You can find me on my blog at www.monicacesarato.com and across all social media platforms. Enjoy the episode and let's journey through Venice together. Welcome back to Venice Talks, Season 2, Episode 13. Hi everybody and welcome back to Venice Talks. This is a solo episode because I would like to talk to you about the new entry tax that came into um, obligation a few days ago. So, April 25th, 2024, marked the first time ever that Venice day trippers were forced charged a fee to enter the city. Pretty soon I will explain you how the system works, how much it costs and the dates when the fee is required. But first, let's go back to last year to September 14th, 2023, when UNESCO decision marked a crucial moment for Venice. This is a time when the city was spared from the inclusion in the endangered list. The endangered list is a roster that comprises around 55 locations uh, uh, confronting various threats like conflict, wars, natural calamities, climate change and excessive tourism, like in the case of Venice. While this was uh, this relief was welcome, uh, you know, pretty much by everybody because we were all worried. Venice has encountered threats to its UNESCO status protection already in the past, underscoring the ongoing challenges it faces. So since the early 2000s, Venice has been getting more and more visitors. Uh, you know, I always we always talk about this during the episode while I'm talking to, uh, you know, whoever I'm interviewing, uh, this increasing number. I actually can pinpoint it to around 2014 when we had personally, when I see this massive increase uh, due to the low, low fares on flights, low fares on, on uh, cruise ships, uh, uh, the arrival of, uh, you know, Airbnb. In 2019, think that a whooping 13 million people visited the city. That is way more than its 49,172 residents. Okay, a forecast tell us that uh, by the end of this year, they will be below 49,000. So you can imagine 49,000 against 30 million in total. Uh, you work it out per, you know, uh, per day, how many people we have in the city of Venice. So, of course, this is this is a new. Venice has been crowded with tourists for a long time now. So, you know, but uh, uh, thankfully, in 2021, after many protests, finally, uh, the government, the government, not the city of Venice, but the Italian government, stopped the big cruise ships from going, passing through the historic se- center, passing through the canal of Giudecca. Uh, but we still get really crowded because we still have a low uh, fly- flights, so we still have a lot of coaches coming in, especially from March to October. Even though I got to say this year, um, we see a lot of people even January and uh, February that um, it was never unheard of before. Our streets are packed. Uh, there's a, there are long lines uh, in front of St. Mark's and the Doge's Palace. Let's not even talking about going um, from uh, uh, through St. Mark's, uh, sorry, through Rialto Bridge early in the morning. It's like, uh, you know... Uh, a long, long, long line of people. So, from this year, 2024, April 2024, access to the historic city centre of the city of Venice requires a fee with an online booking on some weekends between April and July 2024 for a total of 29 days. 
The cost, the cost is five euro per person, roughly five point thirty five dollars, uh, American dollars, um, based on current conversion rate. This fee has to be paid by the tourists. Those uh, don't sleep in the city of Venice. But there are a lot of exemptions, of which I will tell you in a minute. What's the objective of, it, of this experiment? Because so far it is an experiment. But the objective is to discourage hit and run tourism on certain days of the year, when the influx of visitors is expected to be very high. I will tell you the dates in a second. Let's clarify that the entrance fee is mandatory and mandatory is a big word, in the time slot between 8.30 to 4 p.m. So if you arrive before 8.30 or if you arrive, let's say, after 4 p.m., you're not obliged to have this entry fee and to pay for it. So the Venice entry fee dates were April 25th to April 30th, May the 1st to May the 5th, May 11th of 12th, now May 18th and 19th, May 25th and 26th. Then we go to June, June 8th and 9th of June, 15th, 16th of June, 22nd, 23rd of June, 29th, 30th of June, July 6th and 7th of July, 13th and 14th of July. This leaves the other half of July, all of August, all of September and October totally free. Already, that's a point. Where can you register? You can register in a digital, multi-channel and multilingual platform at cda.ve.it, which is active now, where you can book your entry, okay, even your exemption if you need to, pay the ticket per person that needs to be paid before you arrive in the city. To prove that you are booked and paid, you will need to download the appropriate voucher that's given to you once you paid, or your exemption code if you're exempt, which contains a QR code that you need to keep with you at all time, either paper form or on your phone. There are no reductions for the um, contribution. Okay, the contribution is applied only if you go to the historic city. You do not have to re uh, pay for it if you, you still need to register, but you don't need to pay if you go to the Lido of Venice, including Alberoni and Malamocco, if you go to Pelestrina, Murano, Burano, Torcello, Sant'Erasmo, Mazzorbo, Mazzorbetto, Vignole, Sant'Andrea, Certosa, San Servolo, San Clemente and Poveglia. Good job, I just wrote a book about all these islands of Venice that should be available pretty soon in English because that will help you <laughs> avoiding to pay. Okay, now the contribution is not due. You still need to register, but you do not need to pay if you pass in through Piazzale Roma, that's a bus terminal, Tronchetto, that's a, uh, the car terminal, or the maritime station that is a cruise ship terminal without going into the city. So, who has to pay the contribution? So, I read from the uh, official website. The access fee is payable by every natural person aged 14 and over who accesses the ancient city that sounds like uh, Pompeii, so the historic city of the municipality of Venice, unless they fall within the categories of exclusion and exemptions. In general, the contribution is requested for daily visitors. So, who's exempt? Well, first of all, everybody born in the city of Venice, everybody resident in the city of Venice, Minors under the age of 14. You need to show your ID card for this. Every hotel guest who already paid a per night tourist tax. I will explain you later the difference. However, you will need to register in advance on the online system or get a QR code from your hotel. 
Other people that are exempt are people that hold a European disability card and their companion. The people that belong to the armed forces of the police force, but I'm pretty sure that belongs, including also the fire brigades, but I'm pretty sure that means the Italian one, not the foreign ones, okay? Everybody that works in the city of Venice, either employed or self-employed, including commuters, students, again, I'm pretty sure they mean Italian students, okay? Everybody that lives in the, uh, resides and lives in the Veneto region. Everybody that takes part in a uh, sport competition, their spouses, their partners and their relatives and up to the third degree of residence don't have to pay. So, as you can see, that's a lot of people that are exempt. So, what is the difference between tourist tax and access fee? In the municipality city of Venice, all guests stay in accommodation facilities, that is, hotels, guest houses, B&Bs, etc., et are required to pay the tourist tax. Tourist tax, not the entry fee, the tourist tax, which is collected directly by the manager of a facility. So you usually pay when you go and pay your bill. The tax is, coll is collected by applying for each guest the rate established by the city, for the number of nights that the person stays in the structure, that is a, a maximum of about five nights. And it varies according to the type of accommodation. The higher uh, category, the accommodation you stay in, the higher the tax you pay. The entry fee, the access contribution, instead is applied as an alternative to the tourist tax and is aimed at all those who are coming to the city of Venice on the days and time defined by the city, but do not stay in an accommodation in the city, okay? Now, is there a maximum number of accesses? No, absolutely not. There isn't, uh, there isn't a limit to the people that can come in. So, if you come in from outside of the city of Venice, you're not sleeping here. They're not going to tell you not to come. They just say to you, you have to pay for it. As I said before, if you are sleeping in Venice, you do not have to uh, pay. And all you got to do is get in your QR code from your hotel. I tr like to stress this. Okay. How do I demonstrate if I'm passing only through? Piazzale Roma, Tronchetto and Santa Lucia, okay, but I want to go and visit the island. Well, haha, this is, uh, it's not clarified. <laughs> I just say that uh, you, somehow you got to show it. So another thing to keep into consideration. Um, my consideration on this. So on the first day, these are the numbers published by the city of Venice, by the way, okay? so. On the first day, on the 25th of April, 100,000 people registered, registered, okay? So it means that there were already 100,000 people that were thinking of going into the city of Venice. Of those 100,000 people, only 12,000 people fell into the category they had to pay. That meant that the remaining numbers were exempt. So they were other staying overnight or they were already subject uh, and they were already paid for the city tax or they were residents in the Veneto region they were workers students relatives or whatever so that meant only 12,000 people came into the categories of paying for it mm, consider this all right Oh, and to notice that if you are resident and born in the city of Venice, you do, do not need to register at all. You just go around the city of Venice as long as you show your ID card. And that's a, another, let's say, 49,000 people at least, if not more. So, with all the exam people, the fact that you do not need to register if you enter after 4 p.m., the fact that there is no limit on the number of entry. Uh, 
can somebody tell me what is the point of eccentric tax if not just for collecting money? Let's remember that most of the people that come to Venice on a day trip are not just the tourists as it, you know, the mayor and the city want to say. There's a lot of people that come on Friday nights and Saturday nights from the mainland, from the countryside of Venice to have hen and stag nights or simply to go around drinking and binging, okay? They come after four, so they don't have to register. And those are most of the people that cause problems because they are the people that stick around Rialto, they stick around all of Campo Santa Margherita or now Fondamenta degli Ormesini, causing a lot of problems for the residents because they get drunk, they cause a lot of rubbish and so on. Um, these were the people that we supposed to have stopped. But of course, we are not. Okay, good. Now, let's address the question of the uh, cruise ships. For the moment, the municipality is not talking about this. Okay, so uh, back uh, a few years ago, uh, the cruise ships has been stopped. They can no longer pass in front of St. Mark's, but they must land in Porto Marghera. Okay, but from 2027, the city of Venice tried to bring them back. Will they be charged? In theory, they should, because they are day trippers. So isn't this just another way to get more money on top of ready of a tax that, of course, the cruise ships have to pay because the cruise ships have to pay a levy every time they go into a port. My last point. Where is the money that is being collecting going to? Allegedly, but I cannot find any mention of it anywhere on the net. Officially, I found some interviews, but officially nothing is says is being said. I assume most of the money will go for the creation and managing of the app and the booking system and to pay the people, the stewards, the guards at the entry points. The rest, no idea. Your guess is good as mine. So, in other city. Uh, like uh, in other areas like the Balearic Islands or Belize, the entry tax, the purpose tax, uh, is being used and collected to support sustainable tourism projects. Here, we don't know. And that's another thing that bugs me about this entry tax for which I don't agree. Venice has a lot of problems, but I personally think that before addressing uh, the entry of people by charging people, we should address the, the shortage of housing, how the city has become mostly filled with Airbnbs, uh, on that we should educate people to stay longer, because if we get people to stay at least four to five days in Venice, then we wouldn't have this problem of day trippers. We should address also the locals coming in from the countryside. That's how we should, uh, you know, stop people coming in. But that's my idea. You let me know. Please uh, uh, send me your emails, send me comments, write your comments, uh, you know, whichever uh, podcast platform you're listening to. Please let me know what you think. I really like to hear your ideas and I hope uh, I, cleared the, I cleared a little bit of confusion that it was out there. But So I repeat, if you're staying in Venice for more than one night, you know, if you're sleeping in Venice, uh, this uh, contribution doesn't touch you whatsoever and uh, your hotel should send you a QR code. If you decide to sleep outside of Venice, you know you need to register and pay for it. But remember, after four o'clock, you need to register, but you do not need to pay. Um, and there you are. Keep listening, keep subscribing, and I hope, uh, you know, my uh, voice uh, this time uh, will have helped you a little bit. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'll see you in Venice soon, all of you. And don't forget to book a tour or to buy one of my books. Ciao, ciao. Thank you again for listening. Venice Talks Podcast is a production of Sentire Media, created, produced and hosted by me, Monica Cesarato. Follow Venice Talks 
wherever you get your podcast. And if you want to book a food tour or a cooking experience with me, you can find me over at www.monicacesarato.com and on all social medias with the handle at Monica Cesarato, where you can follow my adventures around Venice. And don't forget, if you love this episode, please rate it and leave a review. It's very much appreciated. Hey, podcast producers and show hosts. Do you want to join a podcast network that celebrates all things Italian? At Sentiti Media, we understand the allure of Italy and its unique culture. Our devoted team of hosts and producers are all driven by their shared passion for Italy. And we work tirelessly to create the best lifestyle podcasts and content that will whisk you away to the very heart of Italy. With us, you can savor the mouth-watering flavors, get lost in the stories from the past, break down the cultural barriers, and truly immerse yourself in the vibrant traditions of this intoxicating country. If you have a great podcast idea or are already in production and would like to join Sentire Media, head over to sentiremedia.com, that's S-E-N-T-I-R-E media.com, and find out how to submit your show.